guys and gals, lords and ladies, saints and sinners of every kind. Welcome to Rise Up Jerusalem. My name is Connor, and this week we are going to talk about something I've been wanting to talk about for ages and ages and ages, and I've finally gotten the inspiration to do so. A couple, not even a couple, last week, New Catholic Generation, if you don't know who they are, they are an absolutely phenomenal group on YouTube. Go subscribe to them. They're amazing, although they don't really need me saying that they're amazing because they have way more subscribers than me. Anyways, they do this absolutely phenomenal video reacting to an SNL parody of God's Not Dead 2. And on some of their other videos, they've also mentioned, you know, how to fix Christian movies, why Christian movies have problems. Um, but this one really, it, it just hit. I decided that this week would be the week when I talk about how to fix the Christian movie industry. And honestly, it's not hard. If you guys have seen my episode on God's Not Dead, it's a really old episode. Link is in the description below if you want to go and watch it. In that episode, I talked about the problems with God's Not Dead. And it's the same problem that a lot of people have. It's a Christian feel-good movie. It paints the atheists all as smugs and the Christians as flawless saints who are just trying to do whatever they want to do. And that's the problem with the movie is that it doesn't show what real life is. It shows all the bad guys as bad and all the good guys as good. All the bad characters become good or get their comeuppance and all of the good guys are lauded. This is my problem with that movie. The antagonist, Joss Whedon, he gets to a Newsboys concert and he's lauded over the Jumbotron as an amazing person and all of the bad guys, for example, the atheist professor, he dies. Um, the girl who didn't believe in Christ who got cancer is now becoming a Christian. It's painting a picture that all Christians are good and all non-Christians are bad. And as we know, that's not completely accurate. There are a lot of good non-Christians in the world just as there are a lot of bad Christians in the world. The Christian movie industry is painting this idea because what they're doing is they're making a Christian feel-good movie. It tears down on Christians. It shows Christians the best-case scenario, and it's a scenario that'll never happen. It's a caricature. Now, how do you fix the Christian movie industry? It's simple. Don't make it a caricature. Don't make every single part of the film reflective of the best possible end, but also don't make it a downer. What you really need to do is follow the words of Tom Hiddleston. If you don't know who Tom Hiddleston is, he's an actor. He played Loki in The Avengers, and he has this amazing line. He says, the wonderful thing about Marvel is that they make their heroes flawed and their villains heroic. For example, if you're looking at it, Loki is probably one of the most interesting characters in the thing, not because he's played by Tom Hiddleston and all the female audience members thinks he's the most attractive. Sorry, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Hemsworth, and Chris Evans just... Uh, it's, it is what it is. No, it's because he as a character is the most interesting. He is a heroic character. We see that he is just living through a life where he really wants to be accepted. He wants to be loved, but you know he can't because of who he is. In the same way, a lot of the characters are flawed. Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man, he just, he can't understand other people. He can't relate. He has anger issues. He has depression. Captain America, he is a dude out of his own time period. Bruce Banner, obviously, he hulks out and has his anger problems. Thor is a god trying to understand the place in the world. All of the heroes are flawed, and all the villains seem heroic. And you can't deny that all of the Avengers movies and all the Captain Americas, the Iron Mans, the Hulk, they're all phenomenal. They're all really interesting stories, minus maybe a couple Incredible Hulks and Thor the Dark World, maybe the original Thor. Anyways... They're all good movies. They're interesting. People pay to see them. I saw Captain America Civil War twice. Why? Because it's intriguing. It's all about the flaws behind the character. Now, how do you relate that to the Christian movie industry? Well, what you have to do is you need to do these are flip opposite of what every single Christian movie up to this point has done. Every Christian movie up to this point has pointed the atheist, the non-believer, as the villain and the Christian as the hero. Now, here's the thing. If you watch the movie, it says that straight up. You have, for example, in the trailer for God's Not Dead 2, I still haven't seen God's Not Dead 2. I don't want to see it. I'm going to have to watch it eventually to give my opinion of it. But in the trailer for it, you can see that the main villain, the guy who's obviously the main villain, he's talking to the protagonist's lawyer, and he says, I hate what you and all of your clients stand for. It's like, come on, man. Like, th that is obviously showing, oh, he's the bad guy because he doesn't like Christians. Come on, we don't need to paint that vivid of a picture. I'm sure that guy is a perfectly nice guy, and he disagrees with what Christians say. And in God's Not Dead 1, the atheistic professor, Oh, my mother died, so I hate God, because I don't believe God would allow suffering. This isn't real life. We cannot paint a caricature. We need to do the exact opposite of the caricature, like I mentioned before, and go into the more of the Marvel theme. We need to make the heroes flawed and the villains heroic. When we do that, it'll completely change the ideology of the movie. 
For example, let's say that we took this ideology and apply it to God's Not Dead. What would happen to God's Not Dead? God's Not Dead would switch all of its gears. Paint Josh not as the perfect Christian, as the guy who's sticking it to the man, as a David against the atheistic Goliath. Show him as a flawed character. Show him as someone who experiences self-doubt, not just in one small scene. Show him as someone who's really struggling with something. Show the professor as someone who really is a good person. Just in the movie, they paint the professor as evil, pure evil, and they put for the hero as pure good. This is what we all wish this life could be like, but that's not what it is. There are people who don't believe the Christian values who are good people, and there are people who do believe the Christian values who are bad. Here's the thing. Flip that all in its head. Make Josh flawed. Make the professor heroic. And what ends up happening is the movie becomes interesting. It turns from a movie of, oh, well, yeah, this is the main character and this is the unmain character, to a film that is actually fun to watch. That's what makes The Lord of the Rings so interesting. What J.R.R. Tolkien does, he takes every single character and shows them as human. Aragorn has faults. Boromir obviously has faults. Uh, Frodo has faults. Sam has faults. Every character has a flaw. And by doing that, then characters are interesting. If you have a character that is 100% good, they're not going to be an interesting character. If you have a character who's 100% bad, you will not have an interesting character. If you have the 100% good character going up against the 100% bad character, it will not be an interesting movie. Because you have white versus black. Black versus white. The good versus the bad, the bad versus the good. What ends up happening is it becomes a boring film. And it's a film that isn't relatable. It's a movie that people can say, oh yeah, yeah, oh I believe in Jesus, but that's all it's going to be. It needs to be something deeper than that. The Christian film industry can become so much more if they will make their heroes flawed and the villains heroic. See, what ends up happening also is in these kind of movies, you can't have the main theme be man versus man. You just can't. If you do man versus man, again, you're going to have the flawed villain versus the heroic hero. Now, why is this a problem? Because when you have a movie like that, that is a man versus man, it's just 1v1. It's A versus B. What you need to do is have a man versus self story. God's not dead too. Don't make it, oh, here's people who hate God against people who love God. Make this entire film about flawed individuals going against flawed individuals. A hero who has issues, struggling with their self-worth. A villain who is at heart a good person. Everyone in these films are trying to do the right thing. It comes down to a matter of truth, not a matter of person versus person. Because when you get into a matter of person versus person, what ends up happening is that everyone gets offended, except for the people who are portrayed as perfect. God's not dead and God's not dead too. Atheists are like, we're not like this. Modern critics are like, atheists aren't like this. And Christians aren't like this. Even some Christians are like, well, Christians aren't all like this and atheists aren't all like this. What happens with this character of life is that we start to devolve from an idea, a story based on truth to a story based on personality. One person's belief versus another. What these stories need to be based on is what is truth? That's the real question. What is truth? The question Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? These movies may not draw millions of crowns. These movies may not be million dollar films. They can be, however. Done right, they can be as popular, as money-making, as God's Not Dead. But what needs to happen is we need to make it about the issue. Not about person versus person, but about the idea. The idea of what is I believe versus what this person believes. Let's find truth. Read Thomas Aquinas. That is exactly what he did. He'll take the opponent's ideology, fight for the opponent's ideology, say, this is a really good point. However, what about this? He's missing out on this. What about this little aspect that you haven't thought of? Make it that. Make it about the ideas, not about the people. And it will stop being a pity party fest of yelling and screaming. And it evolves into what becomes an intriguing, intelligent story. No longer are these films one person versus another, where one side is obviously good and the other is bad. Make it one person's belief versus another person's belief in which both people are trying to live their life to the best of their abilities. Is this going to make an interesting story? No. There is one story that I have ever read that has made this correctly. If you haven't read the book, The Philadelphia Catholic and King James Court, you need to read this book. This book makes sense and it applies to this entire idea that I've been talking about. Kidnap Michael, father is a firefighter. 
his father dies in a fire. Michael is very, you know, he hasn't really thought about the faith, not really intelligent. He and his family goes out to live with his uncle over the summer. His uncle's a big Bible Christian. His uncle, you know, is showing him, oh, hey, you know, here's the, you know, the way that I worship. Here's the way you want to come to church with me. Showing, hey, you know, this is this is how we do it. You know, I'm not forcing you to come. You don't have to come. But, you know, this is this is just how we do. And Michael having to go with his own struggles saying, well, you know, I am Catholic. What do I believe? You know, how do I understand what is truth? He's searching for truth. In this story, Michael has flaws. The ones he is fighting also have flaws. They're just people trying to do the right thing. The heroes are flawed and the villains are heroic. Not the villains are flawed and the heroes are heroic. Because that's a simple story. I'm not going to spoil the end of Philadelphia Cow because it's amazing. But let's say if it was made into a film, this is the only way you could do it. Because it's not Christian versus atheist. It's Catholic versus Christian. Can you see how many people will get outraged with that film? Unless, unless you did it as a story of issue versus issue. In which even the people who are the quote-unquote antagonists of the story are still good people just trying to live a good life. Trying to live in the way that they can best seek truth. Make films in which the heroes aren't perfect and the villains aren't pure evil. That is how you fix the Christian movie industry. Now, guys, I want your feedback. Tell me, what do you think? Do you think that is the best way to fix the Christian movie industry? I'm sure I'm missing other ways. This is the one way that I think will really fix a lot of it, though. But tell me what you think in the comments below, um, if I'm correct, or if I missed a little part, maybe you have something to add on to it. I totally want to hear. Tell me exactly what it is. Truth can only be spread, right? Let truth loose, and it will defend itself like a lion. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this episode, subscribe to this channel. I'm doing stuff like this. Watch more of the episodes from Rise of Jerusalem. If you want to watch an episode where I'm ranting like this, I did an episode on the prodigal son and why the way that a lot of people view it is wrong. Link is in the description below. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, rise up and live.